Yeah, my name is Morten. I'm a senior consultant here at Anybody Technology and an R&D engineer. And I'll be talking today about all the new exciting features of Anybody, the Anybody Modeling System version 7.3. It came out around two months ago, I think. And yesterday we had a small update, a small release with mostly bug fixes and minor changes. I'm also going to talk about these things. So today's agenda is first I'm going to talk about some of the core features of the modeling system, some of the user interface features, and some of the new documentation that we have created for the software. And then I'm going to talk about some of the new things in the model repository. And then in the end, we're going to have a questions and answer session where you can uh, ask questions. First of all, what is the Anybody modeling system? It's a, it's a musculoskeletal modeling system. It allows you to take uh, motion data, kinematics, and external forces as input and calculate things like body loads, joint moments, muscle forces, and joint reaction forces. And here below you see a screenshot from the Anybody modeling system. But the Anybody modeling system is also all the models that you use inside it. And these models, they can be used in a wide variety of areas from moment analysis, product optimization design, sports, assistive devices, and orthopedics. Today, we're going to talk both about new stuff in the actual modeling system, but also on the model repository, which is basically a collection of models that accompanies the modeling uh, system. The Anybody modeling system was released, I think, a few months ago, version 7.3. And just yesterday, we released version 7.3.1 with some minor updates and improvements. So if you haven't gotten that latest version, I really encourage you to download it. Together with that latest version, there's also an updated version of the model repository. They usually go together. You can download the newest version by going to our homepage, anybodytech.com, and then click the Downloads button, then Customer Downloads, and then finally, you get to the page where you can, where you can download the modeling system and ensure that you get this version 7.3.1. Let's talk about the new features in the modeling system. First of all, some of the core features that I want to highlight today um, is, for example, the load times of models that's improved by 25%. We got a new wrapping algorithm, which basically um, makes the muscle wrapping much more robust. It allows for faster simulation times. And it's this new wrapping algorithm that I'm going to highlight now. If you don't know what muscle wrapping is, it's basically those idealized objects we put in our models to sort of guide muscle paths. Here are some examples from the model where, for example, here the gastrocnemius wraps over a cylinder that represents the condyle of the femur or um, spheres that sort of guide the gluteus maximum muscle fibers so that you get uh, smooth muscle paths as, as, the, as the hip bends. There's also um, there's also a lot of wrapping surfaces in the shoulder. I would have loved to play this video, but this is one of the ones that I didn't manage to, to change. The new muscle algorithm in anybody is a, basically a two-step algorithm. It first solves the muscle path, allowing the muscle fiber to penetrate these objects a little bit. And then finally, when it has found a, a path of the muscle, it pushes out those muscle fibers onto the surface. And this new wrapping algorithm is much, much, much faster than the, uh, than the old one. And that is what I tried to illustrate here. And this was also some of the videos that didn't work, which I tried to make uh, turn into GIFs. So the old algorithm had the problem that the more contact points were in contact with the, with the wrapping surface, the slower it went, whereas the new one doesn't have that uh, issue at all. So in this case here, where it wraps around uh, a cylinder many times. The new algorithm is, is almost 30 times faster. So the old algorithm, that was the default wrapping algorithm in version 7.2. And the new algorithm that we released, that was an experimental thing that you could enable in version 7.3, but it's become default in the release that we made yesterday. So that's why I really, really recommend that you, that you grab the, the latest version here. Of course, not all models speed up by a factor of 30, because of course, models also contain other kind of muscles and the, mo the model simulations is, is much more than just wrapping uh, muscles over cylinders. But it does help a lot because um, wrapping is one of the, the real bottlenecks in muscular modeling. So for a model like this, a, a lower extremity mocap model, 
running inverse dynamic simulations, the simulation time goes from around six minutes to two minutes. So that's a speed up of around three. For a full body model, running inverse dynamic simulation really helps here because the new algorithm takes it from around half an hour of simulation time down to just four minutes. And I should say that these simulation times are on my really slow laptop. So on on faster computers, this could be order, like it could be many times faster, of course. But the speed up is probably the same. Another case where the new algorithm really shines is when you use force dependent kinematics. And that's because force dependent kinematics basically wraps around existing models and run them many times for each iteration. So in those cases, um, the wrapping algorithm starts to, to really matter. This knee simulator that we have in our model repository, it also speeds up by our factor, factor seven when you run it with a new algorithm. So um, you can also combine surfaces to create new possibilities for wrapping. This one that works here is just two cylinders and a cross. And of course that fixes the, the wrapping path in a certain position. And this is something that the new algorithm also is much more robust with regards to having several wrapping objects that sort of intersect. Um, using two spheres is also a, a cool thing, but that video apparently can't play. Finally, I'd like to give some acknowledgments for this new wrapping algorithm. It's heavily inspired by the work of John Lloyd, who published this paper this year. So especially the way he solves the wrapping problem is something that we have used to speed up our uh, new wrapping algorithm. So we are grateful for that. The next thing I'm going to talk about is some of the improvements to the user interface. So uh, the user interface has become much smoother, especially if you manipulate the model view while a simulation is running. That, that was a little bit annoying before. But right now, it simply just pauses the model view updates and allow you to actually move them or interact with the model view while a simulation is running. I think that is a, is a nice improvement. Another really, really nice thing in the newest version is a model view undo, redo. Let's say that you go in and you hide some stuff uh, in your model. You create sort of a view on a specific model that you, uh, muscle, for example, that you're interested in or hide certain body parts. If you do that by accident, now you can click an undo button and then it, it sort of undoes that view selection that you did, or you can reset it completely. Another nice thing is that if you, if you hide something or set a view and you reload the model, that view sort of persists across uh, reloads until you load a completely different model, then it resets. But, but the view persists across reloads and that makes modeling much easier because you can sort of create your own view of a certain part of the body that you're working on, and then you can reload the model without having to reset that view all the time. There's also a new hierarchical um, class tree in anybody that makes it easier to find the, the, the classes that you're looking for. Basically, it groups the classes into sort of different related objects. So in this case here, you could see that we uh, opened the class tree and then we um, we looked for the classes that we needed. You have like a, a muscle group here where you can find all the classes representing muscles, all the classes representing joints and reference frames. And here we find a, any ref node, we right click it and select insert class template. And then that code is inserted into, into the editor. So it's a, an easier way of finding the stuff that you need. Finally, version 7.3 comes with a, with a new reference manual that we are really, really happy for. So what you see here on the left side is the old reference manual. And the reference manual is basically where you would go in and read, read up on what these different parts of the AnyScript language did. For example, on this AnyRefNode class, you could read what it did and you could look at the member uh, variables that this class had. Um, but all of that has been updated in the in the newest version with a new reference manual that is basically launched in a browser. It has a quick search facility, so you can e easily search for the classes or stuff that you need. If you find, go in and, and, and look up a class, you can see what type it is, its parents or child classes. Um, you can also find examples for some of the classes. And we'll try to add more examples because we really recognize that this makes it easier to model that you have some small examples to go by. And finally, here in the bottom, you um, you can, of course, still view the members of that class and see documentation for those. Yeah, 
uh, and in the uh, sidebar there are um, ways to get to the full list of classes and of the functions that you have in anybody and all kind of other things that are useful you find the reference manual by going to uh, to the help menu inside anybody and then you click basically any script reference and if you do that the reference manual launches um, in an external browser another way to find the reference manual is to find an object that you're interested in for example here in the in the editor a certain class and then you click f1 for help and that will also launch the reference manual on that specific class that you wanted the same trick works if you click a class in the model tree and click f1 so what else has changed in anybody you can uh, find out the full list by going into help and then select release notes and this will bring up the full release notes and i really encourage you to do so because there are many more things that i uh, were able to highlight here this brings us to what's new in the model repository how do you get the new model repository well the easiest thing is that take the to take the version that comes bundled with anybody so when you install the newest version of anybody 731 you can go in and select help and then anybody assistant and then select the demo tab and that has a link that allows you to unpack your version so that will take the version that comes with anybody and unpack it into your documents folder and we really recommend that you do that so that you sort of get your own copy of the model repository it's really not recommended to go into the install files and modify the version that is in there because it's usually read only and if you manage to screw something up then you have trouble getting uh, getting a clean version again another possibility if you want uh, to just download the anybody model repository or older versions of it is um, to go to this page called Synodo. it's an data archiving page it's run by CERN, the, 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 the scientist in CERN. And finally, as I said, you can, you can find it from our internal development repository on GitHub. The repository is by default private. And this is usually something we do because we have a lot of uh, academic collaborators who often need to publish their models before, um, before they want to make them public. So, so it's, it's by invite, you can say. But we would really love people to um, to get access. So if if you if you want the bleeding edge, you can go to this this URL that I have written here, and there is some instructions on how to request access to um, uh, to our model repository on GitHub. I can only encourage that. We we love working together with people. What's new? Um, yeah. The highlights that I'm going to talk about for the model repository is uh, improved shoulder rhythm and uh, shoulder wrapping. Also, we have a new full body gait mocap model that is really exciting and a new statistical scaling plugin. These are just three highlights that I'm, I will talk a little bit about. First, the shoulder uh, model improvements. Shoulder rhythm has been updated so that it much more resembles uh, this paper here from 1998. And the shoulder rhythm is basically something that moves the shoulder degrees of freedom when you change the angle of humerus with respect to torus. So there is sort of a, a regression that says how should the clavicle move and how should the, the, the scapula move. And that works much better now because it's implemented in a, in a different way. It basically is a regression to how much the humerus is lifted in different planes whereas before it was directly tied to the concept of abduction and, um, and flexion, which has some gimbal locks in unfortunate places. So, um, so the shoulder rhythm works much better now. In this case here, we're just rotating the humerus around and you can see how the shoulder, the whole shoulder complex moves with respect to that. Another improvement to the shoulder is that many of those shoulder muscles, they've got new wrapping surfaces. Here's an example from uh, for Teos Minor, which is where we have implemented its wrapping surface with a torus. And it ensures that the Teos Minor wrapping is much more stable now. It, it can't really fall off the edge of, for example, a cylinder if we've, we've used that. There is still room for improvements to the shoulder rhythm, though. In this case, it is a linear rhythm. But we have possibilities to create these uh, nonlinear relationships between degrees of freedom. So if there's any of you who do research these kind of shoulder rhythms we would really lo love to help we have some some good 
functionality now to to do some advanced stuff here so uh, please get in, co in contact if uh, if that's your area of, of interest yeah the next thing i'm going to talk about is this new full body adl gate mocap model and here adl stands for activities of uh, of daily living so it's it's a it's a large pre-configured full body mocap model Previously, the mocap models we had in, in the model repository, they were just examples of how you could take your own data um, and then create a larger model. But we also experienced that it can be difficult for many users to set up these really large models. It requires a lot of, uh, a lot of work. So what we've done here is we have taken an, a free data set with 50 subjects and 1,100 trials, and then we have created the full model for that. And it's a really nice data set. It, it, as I said, it contains 50 subjects and a lot of trials. And for each tri for each subject, there are five walking speeds and many trials for each speed. The next thing, it's a data set which was published in Scientific Data by Celine Schreiber and uh, Florent Moschini. And it's called, well, popular, it's called the Reha, Reha Center Adult Walking Data Set. It's um, licensed under Creative Commons, so it's free for everyone to use however they like, as long as they uh, give tribute. So I can't recommend this anymore. It's really high quality data and data collection. You find the model inside uh, the Anybody Modeling System by going to the mocap model examples folder, and then you click this ADL gate folder. And inside that, there is a, a subjects folder. And this is because we, are in, we basically implemented a, a separate model for each trial. So if you go into the subjects folder, you will find folders for each of the 50 subjects. They are named the same way as in the original data set. So if we select the subject, we see that it, this subject has 22 items, 22 trials, and we can select one of the trial. And inside there, there will be a main file that you can launch in anybody. And if you do so, you, you get a model of that specific trial. So that's really useful. If you just do that out of the box, try to run these models, you would get this error in anybody. It basically says that you need to download the data set yourself. So we don't distribute the data set. It takes up a, a lot of megabytes of data, but it's easy to download. There is a link in here. You download it, unzip it, and place, place all the C3D files in the subfolder uh, of, the, of the model. And then it runs out of the box. And of course, we know that when there's so many trials, it's not easy to run them all by hand. So we've also included a batch processing script here small Python script that allows you to batch process the whole thing. It basically um, runs anybody for you. First, it runs all the standing reference trial to scale the model um, and find market positions. And then it runs all the dynamic uh, trials afterwards. And you can define which kind of outputs you want and how you want to save it afterwards or process it in, uh, in Python. If you're more the kind of person that use MATLAB, then maybe you can, you can take a look at this script and see how you could do something similar with MATLAB. Yeah, the final thing I'm going to talk about is um, a new small tool that we've created. Um, it's a statistical scaling plugin. And it's basically an example of, for example, how you can create small plugins and applications for anybody. But it's also a very useful tool in itself, because if you, if you are setting or scaling a, a model, it can be hard to find anthropometric combinations that actually make sense. And I'll get back to that in a minute. And this little tool helps you do that. And you can use the tool in any model by, by including the lines of code that you have in here, down here. But there is also an example model that shows you how to use it. And you find it by going into the application subfolder under examples and then statistic scaling plugin and then loading the model in there. When you do that, a small icon shows up in the toolbar that says answer configuration. An answer here refers to the, um, the anthropometric database that this tool was created from. So it's a, it's a database of American uh, servicemen and women, around 1,700 men and 2,200 women. And if you click the, the link, it launches a small GUI application like this, where you can change different kind of inputs, um, stature, weight, other kind of inputs we'll get back to. And it basically allows you to constrain some values and then it calculates the rest for you. And I'll, I will show you uh, what I mean by that. If you, um, if you imagine that you have two anthropometric variables here, the arm span and the body height, then if you measure a lot of people, you can, you can imagine that these two variables will of course be correlated in some way, that you will have a cloud of data points that is really correlated. 
And of course, this cloud will also have a mean value for each of the body height and, and the arm span. Um, and that will sort of be a mean or an, an average person, of course. But if you then go in and say, I want actually to constrain the body height, I want a model of a certain height, then just selecting the mean arm span uh, will give you a really unlikely combination or a very unlikely model, right? What we really want to do is we want to select a person that lies up here where, where, it's, um, where, where the data sort of fits together. And in this 2D example, it's easy to see how things fit together. But if you have many, many um, anthropometric variables, the space become high, becomes high dimensional. And then it's really difficult to, to, to get the right parameters. Uh, and this is what the, this little tool helps you do. So you can imagine that, uh, yeah, basically it has all of these functional dimensions that is also in the original answer database. And you can go in and set those if you want. Or you can just, for example, as we did before, you can set the stature. Let's do that here. Change the stature to a, a really tall guy. And if we then go in and take a look at the functional dimension, so you see that it has recalculated those. So now you get the person who is with that height. You get the average person, basically, with that height constraint on. So that's the purpose of the tool. Yeah. What else has changed? There's a lot of improvements and bug fixes to the model system. and. Uh, for example, the, the BBH marker protocol has changed. If you have an old model that uses these kind of uh, inertial mocap suits and you load that with the newest version of anybody, it will trigger a warning that will tell you what you need to change. There's also improvements to the muscle and wrapping surfaces in many places uh, of, of the models. And there is stability improvements in general for the mocap models. And besides these things, there are many more bug fixes and improvements. And you can find out all about those by actually going to um, the documentation page for the model repository, and then click this link, what's new in, uh, in AMR 231. And if you do that, there's a whole list of things that you can, uh, that you can look at. Yep, and this brings me to the end. Uh, I'd like to uh, point you to our webpage for further event states, and um, and also we have a really good publication list on our on our homepage. So if you do or are going to do any kind of research with a, with anybody, I highly highly recommend that you look up this publication list. It's easy to sort it with respect to to the area that you're interested in, and it has it basically lists all the papers that uses anybody within different kind of areas. Yeah. We can also recommend that you go and see our forum, our forum site. So forum at anyscript.org. It's a really good place to ask questions and get help, um, both from us uh, at the company, but also from users around the world. Um, yeah. Then finally, we have some events. I think there's an online uh, PhD course at the moment uh, at Oppo University. So I'm. Uh, I'm hoping that they are doing well. And then there is some upcoming webcasts. On the 15th of October, there is one. But these are all future webcasts that we will have more information on soon. They are with uh, external speakers, and I'm really looking forward to those. So with that, I think it brings us to the end. I'd like to thank everyone for listening in, and um, see you for some of the next webcasts. Bye-bye. <laughs>